one thing I have learned in life is if you are having a bad day, do not worry. The next day could even be worse or better. Every day we live changes. What's bad one day could be gone the next and vice versa. And if whether you're religious or not, there is one phrase, a short phrase that appears in the King James Bible more than any other. Any other in the entire Bible. And that is fear not. And I think we all need to embrace that phrase because whether something turns out good or bad, worrying about it does nobody any good. And that's what I did yesterday. I was worrying all day because Waldo was in very bad shape. I actually at some points thought that I was going to lose him yesterday because he was the worst he's been uh, since this began with him. And this morning, that boy is pretty much breathing normal. He jumped up. He knew it was time for his morning treat, and he devoured it. His tail was wagging, and that's what I needed to see. And it just took a few days for the medications to kick in. I think our air quality the last few days has not helped, but that is now gone. And I, I went in there about 10 o'clock last night, maybe a little later, and told them both good night, turned their lights down. They got a light that adjusts. You know, in the daytime, it goes up high. Don't want them living in a cave. And then, and then I've also started leaving on their overhead light. I don't, want them, I don't want them thinking that's, you know, it's nighttime all day. And I turned their TV off. Yes, they got a TV. They watch it. The animal shows. You know, they like to watch that. And I did check on him. I put the camera just on that room on my screen, left it on all night. I've been doing that all week. And I woke up a few times during the night and checked on him. One time he was in the bed. His eyes were open. He was looking at the TV, but it wasn't on. I think he had slept so much that previous day that he wasn't tired. And he was in the bed, had his head, and he just, then he got out of the bed. The next time I got up, he was on the floor, and that's where he was this morning. And I went in, and he was a lot better. I mean, a lot better. Still sick, but he is improving. And it's been a roller coaster. I was so stressed yesterday over this. And all I had to do is wait a day. But you just don't know. We don't have a crystal ball we can't see into the future. And I wasn't even going to do a video on either channel yesterday. I ended up doing two on the other channel and a live stream. And I don't do live. I haven't done a live stream in over a year. I think last Dogtober was the last time I did a live stream. And I just used the same setup, exactly what you see now. And it, and it looked really good. So that's on the other channel if you want to catch that. I think it's 53 minutes long. But uh, a lot of people have been asking me what medications he is taking. So I got them right here. I can't remember all these at once. Let's take a look. I'll tell you what he's on. Now, every 24 hours, he has to take this enolapril. Uh, you can see that enolapril. 20 milligrams. That's pretty medium sized pill. In a in a in a pill. I don't know what that does. Uh prednisone. He takes two tablets by mouth every twenty four hours. And then here he's got Lasix, twenty milligrams. He takes one of these every 12 hours. A real, real tiny pill. I guess that's the water pill for his heart. And this is clindamycin. 
think that's uh, antibiotic or uh, anti-inflammatory something. I don't know. I'm not a vet. And these are big old capsules. He's got two left. Thank God. I hate giving dogs capsules. So those are what he's on. Apparently they're working. And he has not missed one dose of medication. I discovered a little bitty trick this morning that worked just perfect. He didn't like peanut butter. I would take those capsules and I'd break them open. Yesterday, I just shoved it down his throat. He did not care for that. And they never do. And I know how to do that. I can do it with chickens, too. Uh, but it's easier just to break them open and put them on something. But like Rooster, she detects that and will not touch it. So I was just cutting a slit and I'd get the ends of a hot dog, cut a little hole in there and then pour the powder in. It's not the easiest to get in there, but you can get it in. And then I'd cover the top with peanut butter so that it wouldn't pour out. But he doesn't like peanut butter. Imagine that. So this morning, I covered it in bacon grease. Ooh, that was a magic trick. That bacon grease. Ah. Uh, I think that's, you know, if you go to heaven and you go into God's kitchen, there is eight million gallon tanks of bacon grease because that stuff works wonders. I got them to eat the vegetables by just lightly frying it in the bacon grease. They love it. And it's good for them. A lot of people say, you can't give nobody bacon grease. It'll give you heart problems. No, it doesn't. It does not. Carnivores know that. But the rest of the world hasn't caught up to us yet. They'll learn. Or they won't. So I am happy about that. Uh, there is no worse feeling than knowing that your your animals are not well. And you're the caregiver. And I've had him a long time. And, and let me go into this. Okay. If it was not for Waldo, that dog, that little beagle dog, if it was not for him, I would not be here in this house. I would not probably own a house. And you're like, how can that be? Uh, let me let me go back a bit. In 2012, I was in Florida. I was in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. I had just got divorced. I was living in Tulsa. I just got divorced. And a friend of mine, a physician, lived in Palm Beach Gardens. Yes, because I couldn't couldn't afford Palm Beach Beach Gardens, trust me. It was a very, very expensive community. Her father had passed away and had a lot of things, and I was very good at doing eBay. So... After, you know, during this divorce, I went to live to move to Florida, stayed with her and listed these things on eBay for her, but I knew I had to get a job. And so I was looking all over the country. What I did for a living, I could get a job anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world, actually. And I did get a job offer in Alaska, Ketchikan, Alaska, very expensive place, very touristy. But I had never been to Alaska. So I did the drug test. I did all that. I was hired. But I also had a backup job, and that was in Little Rock uh, doing printing. And did the drug test for that. Same thing. I was hired. Just had to show up. And I had to choose between the two. Well, I'm talking to a friend uh, that I went to school with in Tulsa. And her and her husband had just inherited a farm here in Arkansas, about 30 miles from here. And it had been sitting vacant for quite a while. Uh, Like a lot of these homesteaders you see now, they're moving to the property. Property's not livable. They got to fix it up. Well, it was one of them situations. Oh, I wish I would have started YouTube then. So I decide out of a, just out of a, you know, I'm tired. I, I never liked what I did for a living. I hated it but it paid good. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to take a break from this. And I took, she, she offered, she said, why don't you move here for a while? See if you like it, help him out, get this place ready. It was a 
50 acres, a uh, little cabin on 50 acres, and they also had another place with 50 acres. And the other place with 50 acres had a house in the same, probably worse condition, and the original plan was I was going to move to that piece of property and fix that house up. But after touring that house, it was not, it was not salvageable. The floors were gone. It, everything was rotted. Uh, I did get so far as to put a power pole in and a box, and this house became available. And so I made an offer on this, got it for $10,500. But backing up, that I decide, okay, I'm going to Arkansas. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. What, what the hell? Why not? I love rural living. I've done it all my adult life. Even working in cities, I would drive. You know, I'd live rural. So I said, I'm going to do that. I get here about 2 p.m. on September 22nd. At 2 p.m., I drove straight through from Florida. I'm dead tired. I think I stopped maybe an hour at a rest stop outside of Little Rock because I couldn't go anymore. And I get here. I fight the rest of the day to stay up so I could go to bed and get up at a decent hour. And I wake up about 6 o'clock the next morning. And outside in the front yard, didn't even have fences around the yard yet, were two pups waldo and lucy his sister and i named him right there i said ah, he looks like a waldo and they were just playing they ignored us totally ignored us and they were just out in the yard playing with each other and then i called out to him and waldo come running over jumped right up in my lap he got down lucy jumped up in my lap and that was a thing with lucy all the way until i lost her she would jump up in my lap, even as a full-grown dog, and then she would turn around like a little baby, and you and she'd be looking at me, and you'd hold her like a baby, and she'd stay. You had to, she'd stay until you put her back on the ground, and she did that every single day. So I named them, and I told the guys, you know, my my friend's husband. I said, I'll, I'll take these two on. Didn't even have a job yet. Didn't even know I was staying. I had no intention, I don't think, of staying here permanently. So that morning after that, we, we went to the cafe, and I was, there was a guy, everybody, it's one of them old, you know, country cafes. Everybody sits around these big tables, all at one table, drinking coffee. And I got offered a job, and that's the ranch that I worked at all those years. And so I had you know, an income source, and the guy paid me cash and a pretty good wage. Uh, I ended up buying a fifth wheel on a weekly payment plan from, you know, my friend. I had 40 bucks a week for 900 bucks. I paid for this fifth wheel. And over the next year, year and a half, uh, I, I got hurt. So I had to quit the ranch, and I went to work for a pawn shop. And I found this property. So the way he saved my life is I knew I had a responsibility. And there was others that showed up before I left there. Wally had showed up. I got Lulu, another beagle. I found her at the ranch. Uh, they had a little campground. Found her there. Brought her home. So I had four dogs before I even had a house. And then once I bought this house, I moved the fifth wheel out here. There was no electric. I mean, it was it was in bad shape. And brought all them dogs out here with me, and then I added several more, fostered a bunch. So I don't think if I would have had Waldo, you know, I knew I had to find. I wanted these dogs, and I knew I had to find a place for them. They couldn't stay at that farm forever. The other one was not. It would have cost too much to fix up. It would have had to been totally tore down and rebuilt. And they had logged the property. There were mountains of timber that had been piled up there for years. I don't know how I would have ever got rid of all that. So I ended up getting my own place. Now it's paid for. Fast forward, he's 13 years old. And I owe everything that's happened to me to those dogs 
and not just to Waldo and Lucy, but to all of them, because they've kept me home. They've made me more responsible, and they can do that for you. If your heart's in the right place, those dogs can change your life. So that's one reason that boy is so important to me, because I've never been without him this whole time. And I want to keep him as long as I can. But I want him healthy, too. So hope you enjoyed that story. That is a true story. That's why he is so important to me. He is the last. He is the, as my brother said, he is the OG. He is the original gangster. That's Waldo. And we got to hang on to him. He's doing much better. Dogtober is going great. Uh, we are up to $286, I believe, so far. What are we in the seven, day seven? So I'd like to get that up there a little more. You know, that's just for six, no, five days. That's for five days because they're two days behind. So that's great. 200 and almost three, between both channels. That's how much we've earned for the rescue. And you can help by memberships. You can help by viewing the videos, liking, subscribing, all that helps. I appreciate it. Uh, you can go back and watch old videos. There are plenty of old videos on both channels. There is a link to my other channel in the description. So if you have not subscribed, you haven't checked that channel out, go over there and check it out. And it, it benefits the dogs. And dogs are lifesavers. Thanks for watching. Happy trails and happy tales.